Good morning, all of you. My name is Ashutosh Shastri. I am a teacher by profession. My mission is to impart quality education to all. For that purpose, I am creating these videos. If you appreciate my work, then please do like my video and subscribe my channel so that I could get the motivation to prepare more videos. Anyways, in our last lecture, we will discussing about generation and detection methods of ASK, FSK, and PSK, in which we have discussed about generation as well as coherent detection methods of ASK as well as PSK. So in this particular lecture, we will continue our discussion. We will start up with the generation methods of ASK, then its coherent detection method which will be followed by non-coherent detection methods of ASK and FSK. Then we will give some applications of ASK, FSK and PSK in the human life. Then at last we will finally conclude with the advantages of digital modulation techniques. So as we had already discussed in our last lecture about ASK as well as PSK that in digital modulation techniques we are actually trying to vary some of the characteristics of my continuous carrier waveform that is either its amplitude, its space or frequency with respect to the incoming binary signal or the higher value of pulse or lower value of pulse. In ASK we have described that presence of pulse actually shows uh, data bit sequence 1 and absence of pulse shows data bit sequence 0. Similarly phase or out of phase same represents high value of pulse or low value of pulse. So in our uh, frequency shifting also we will be actually utilizing two types of frequencies. One frequency is corresponding towards higher value of pulse and another frequency or different frequency for representing zero value of pulse. So again here the basic definition lies. The most basic form of FSK involves the process of varying the frequency of a carrier wave by choosing one of the two frequencies in correspondence to the sequence of digital pulses. That constitutes the information signal. So again, the two binary digits are represented by two frequencies around the carrier frequency, whereas the amplitude remains fixed. So this particular slide actually shows how our binary frequency shift in waveform looks like. So this particular waveform shows your input binary sequence that we have to pass it on towards the receiver. 1 will be represented by this higher value of pulse and 0 will be represented by this lower value of pulse. So again this sequence becomes 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 like this. This particular waveform actually shows the first carrier frequency and this lower higher value of frequency shows another carrier frequency which is equal to omega 1. We are intentionally showing the value as omega 0 or omega 1 just because we have to show up that omega 0 is corresponding towards when we are actually passing 0 value of the signal and omega 1 is the frequency that we will utilizing for uh, representing uh, higher value of us that is your 1. So this particular composite waveform actually shows the actual FSK waveform. Higher value of us will be uh, producing higher value of frequency which is analogous to omega 1 and this lower value of pulse we are using lower value of frequency which is represented by this particular waveform means higher value of frequency, lower value of frequency, higher value of frequency, higher value of frequency then again lower value of frequency. This composite signal which actually contains two carrier frequencies represents the binary FSK waveform. This particular uh, signal ST actually shows the binary FSK signal A cos omega 1 t which is represented by this particular sequence and A cos omega 0 t which is represented by this particular waveform. So now we will discuss how we are going to generate the FSK signal. So initially we will be having binary data in the unipolar form which we will going to pass it on to a product modulator whose another input is the oscillator which actually generates the carrier frequency corresponding to omega 1 or equivalent to omega 1. 
then another part of same minority data uh, sequence will pass through the inverter which actually inverts the binary strings means wherever we will be having higher value of pulse it will produce lower value of pulse and wherever we will be having lower value of pulse it will actually produce higher value of pulse then this inverted signal will be passed through the product modulator whose another input is the oscillator to which actually generates uh, another carrier frequency which is equivalent to omega 0 then the output of these two product modulator product modulator first and product modulator second will go through an adder and the output of the adder will be essentially an FSK signal so this is how we actually generate our FSK signal this particular slide shows the explanation whatever we have discussed in our last blocks diagram so for generating FSK signal we use two product modulators the input of the first modulator is the carrier frequency 1 and the binary data which generates the ASK signal with the carrier frequency associated with the oscillator frequency 1. Here we actually uh, like to mention that uh, we are actually producing two ASK signals and with the help of two ASK signals we are trying to generate our FSK waveform. So the second input of the second modulator, the carrier frequency 2 and the inverted binary data stream which generates another ASK signal associated with the carrier frequency 2. So the output of the second modulator's ASK signal is of inverted nature as we had already discussed. That is we do not have the signal value where the first modulator signal is high and vice versa. So the output of the two modulator is then passed to the adder circuitry and the output of the adder is essentially a FSK signal. This particular slide shows how we are going to coherently detect a FSK signal. So again we will be having FSK signal ST as our input side which will be simultaneously passed it on through the two correlators. Correlators is actually uh, the combination of product multiplier as well as which, which will be followed by the integrator. So simultaneously our binary FSK signal ST will be passed on through the two product multiplier whose second input is essentially the carrier waveform. Uh, the upper correlator is having the carrier frequency omega 1 and the lower correlators uh, and the lower correlators product multiplier circuitry having the another carrier frequency omega 1. Then we pass the product modulator output to the uh, integrator. Then integrator output will be passed to the comparator. Comparator essentially compares the outcome of the two correlators and depending upon the comparison result it actually makes decision whether the transmitted bit was 1 or 0. How it actually comparing or making decision about the transmitted bit for 0 or 1? It actually compares correlator 1's at a particular time output as well and correlator 2 at a particular time's output. So if correlator 1's output is greater than correlator 2 out output, then comparator takes the decision that the transmitted bit was 1 and if correlator second outcome is greater than the correlator one then decision has been made in favor of zero so this is how we actually detect our FSK signal coherently we are uh, making this word coherently because we easily show that the pro product multiplier uh, utilizing same carrier frequency omega one and omega zero that we have uh, exploited while transmitting our FSK signal. So this particular slide shows the explanation of detection of FSK signal. So again the detector consists of two correlators that we had already discussed that are which are individually tuned to two different carrier frequencies to represent symbol 1 or 0 means omega 1 and omega 0. Omega 1 for representing 1 and omega 0 for representing 0.
A correlator consists of a multiplier which will be followed by an integrator. The received binary FSK signal is then applied to the multiplier of both the correlators. The other input of the multipliers are the carrier waveforms with the frequency omega 1 and omega 0. Then the output of the two integrators are then fed to the decision making device. The decision making device is essentially a comparator which compares the output of the two correlators. So depending upon the comparison outcome, the decision device detects whether the transmitted bit was 0 and 1 and how decision making device actually makes the decision we had already discussed. Likewise, if the correlator's first output is greater than correlator 2, then decision has been uh, made in favor of 1 and if correlator 2's output is greater than correlator first, then decision has been made in favor of 0. Disadvantages of binary uh, frequency shifting signals. So the generation of BFSK is easier, but it has many disadvantages in comparison to BPSK signal. What are they? First of all, bandwidth of the BFSK signal is greater in comparison to BPSK signal and it is almost double the bandwidth of the BPSK signal. We could easily understood it with the fact that in PSK we will be exploiting or utilizing only a single carrier whereas while producing our BFSK signal we are using two different carrier frequencies. So obviously on that basis we could easily say that the bandwidth requirement of BFSK signal is greater than the BPSK signal. Then uh, the error rate of BFSK is higher in comparison to our BPSK signal. So these are the disadvantages. Now we will move forward to discuss about non-coherent binary modulation techniques. So it is not always possible for us to have the carrier information at receiving side always. So at those places where we do not have the carrier information at the receiving side, how will we to demodulate our matches signal? So the answer is non-coherent binary detection techniques. Coherent detection exploits the knowledge of the carrier signal. We have already discussed it. When it is not practical to have knowledge of the carrier phase at the receiver, non-coherent detection methods have been employed to detect the modulated wave. So in this part we shall study non-coherent detection of ASK as well as FSK. In case of uh, phase shifting, we do not have non-coherent PSK since non-coherent means doing without phase information and if we do not have the phase information then in PSK how will going to modulate our signal as we are actually transmitting 1 or 0 in terms of phase shift and if we do not have phase shift then there is no there is no utility of having uh, phase shift in or PSK moderated waveform. So that is why we do not have non-coherent PSK method. This particular slide shows how we are going to non-coherently detect our ASK signal. So if we have to detect or demodulate our ASK signal essentially the input will be your ASK signal. So that ASK signal will be passed through the band pass filter whose major job is to is to contain the desirable frequency band. Then that output will be passed to the rectifier. What rectifier does here is it, it actually removes out the negative cycle of the carrier waveform. Then this rectified signal will be passed through the low pass filter. The job of low pass filter is just to smoothen out the uh, incoming um, signal which will be the outcome of rectifier. So the combination of rectifier as well as low pass filter will be called as envelope detector. Then the envelope detector output will be passed to the decision making device which depending upon the threshold value of the signal actually decides whether the transmitted bit was 0 or 1. So the complete operation of this non-coherent detection uh, let us understand it with few some waveforms or wave shapes. Suppose this is the output of bandpass filter. It 
this is actually a ASK waveform presence of pulse flows transmitted with pulse 1 and absence of pulse flows the transmitted with pulse 0. So let us say we will be having this type of wave shape. When we pass that sequence through rectifier, what rectifier does it? It actually clips off these negative circuits. And what we are left with? This particular wave. So this will be the output of rectifier. Then what our low pass filter does is it actually tries to smooth that waveform. And we are left with this type of signal. Then further again decision making device will depending upon the threshold value actually compares this signal with the threshold value and determines whether the transmitted bit was 1 or 0. Obviously, it compares with the threshold signal strength and if the threshold signal strength is lesser than the incoming sequences, then the decision making device makes the decision in favor of 1 and if the threshold value is greater than the incoming signal, then it takes decision in favor of 0. So, this is how we actually non-coherently detect our ASP signal. This particular slide shows the explanation of non coherent ASK detection. So, binary ASK signal can also be demodulated non coherently using envelope detector. We had already mentioned that envelope detector is actually the, the combination of your rectifier and the low pass filter. It greatly simplifies the design consideration that is required in the synchronous detection. Non coherent detection schemes do not require a phase coherent local oscillator as we are dealing with non coherent schemes. So, obviously, the exact carrier information is not required at the receiving side. Non coherent ASP detection methods involves rectification as well as low pass filtering at the receiver. We have already discussed that operation. So, now we will discuss about how we will to non coherently detect our FSK signal. So, if we have to detect our FSK signal, yes, then essentially the input will be a FSK waveform. That FSK input will be simultaneously passed through the band of two band pass filter, whose job is to select the desirable range of frequencies which in which our signal actually contains. These two band pass filters are centered around the uh, centered around the central carrier frequencies omega 1 and another band pass filter is centered around the carrier frequency omega 0. Then the output of the band pass filter will be passed through envelope detector which is actually the combination of rectifier as well as low pass filter. Then envelope detector's output will pass through the sampler which actually generates the sample of the incoming signal. Then the outcome of both samples will be passed through the comparator which actually compares the output of two samplers at particular instances. If in a particular instance, if sampler 1 output, this upper sampler output is greater than this lower sampler output, then essentially comparator takes the decision that 1 bit was transmitted and if lower sampler output is greater than the upper sampler output, then comparator takes the decision that 0 bit was transmitted. This is how we actually detect our FSK signal non -coherent. This particular slide shows the explanation, whatever we have discussed in our last slide. So, binary FSK wave may be demodulated non coherently with the help of using envelope detector. The received FSK signal is applied to the band pass filter in which one is tuned to central frequency omega 1 and another one is tuned to frequency omega 0. Each filter is followed by an envelope detector. The resulting output of the two envelope detectors are sampled and then compared with each other. The working of envelope detector we have already discussed that. The decision is made in favor of symbol 1 if the envelope detector output derived from the filter 1 which is tuned to frequency omega 1 
is larger than the derived from the second fit line. Otherwise, the decision is made in favor of symbol zero. We had already discussed that if the upper sampler outcome is greater than the lower sampler output, then the comparator takes the decision that one bit was transmitted. If the sampler two or lower sampler outcome is greater than sampler first or upper sampler outcome, then decision is made in favor of zero. This we had already discussed. So this particular slide shows the various applications of ASK, FSK, and PSK. Although all those digital modulation techniques are being utilized for transmitting our digital information, but here we are actually trying to explain some of the typical application areas of ASK, PSK, and FSK. So the amplitude shifting technique is mainly used to transmit the digital data over the optical fiber cable. Means we have to transfer our data with the help of optical fiber or through optical fiber cable. Then we are exploiting this sort of modulation technique. FSK signal can be transmitted via telephone lines, fiber optics, or wireless media. It is commonly used for caller ID and remote metering applications. So this is the typical use of FSK. PSK is typically applied in wireless local area network, that is your WLAN, Bluetooth technology, and radio frequency identification, or several other short-range communications too, which are used in biometric, passport, and contactless payment systems. So these are the typical use of PSK. Then at last. What are the various advantages associated with digital modulation techniques? Obviously, in comparison to analog modulation techniques, we are trying to provide some sort of advantages. So, first of all, it is having greater noise immunity in comparison to our analog modulation techniques. It means they are lesser susceptible to noise, or they are much more immune in comparison to analog techniques. Or you could also say that uh, noise affects more analog signals in comparison to digital signals. Multiplexing is more easier than analog modulation of various types of signals such as voice, video, data, etc. Actually, if you talk about our analog signal, the representation or the the signals are actually differ in sort of some sort of construction. Likewise, if you talk about voice, video, or data signals, but in contrast, if we are talking about digital signals, all those signals, whether we are talking about voice, video, or data, they could be represented with a common sort of data. So obviously, multiplexing is much more easier in comparison to analog modulation techniques. So again, digital information can be saved and retrieved easily. Nowadays, we already using uh, many media like wise your you know, compact disc or uh, your hard drive, etc. So obviously, we could see that in comparison to those older data storage technique, like wise your tapes, these sorts of uh, things are uh, much better. Digital modulation techniques can accommodate the digital transmission errors with the help of Channel coding, which typically includes your linear block coding or uh, your convolution codes, etc. Then source coding, which is associated with the compression of the information source. It means with the help of transmitting lesser number of bits, we can transfer large amount of information. Same. And last encryption, which is associated with the security. So. Digital data transmission is much more secure in comparison to analog data transmission. At last, digital signal processors actually implement digital modulators as well as demodulators completely in the softwares. It means it is not the essential requirement of hardware. So obviously, it is one of the advantage of digital modulation techniques. So these are the references that I have used while preparing this lecture. Last. Thank you very much for your patience.